read some bad books. These are the good books. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> no, keep that. Keep that in. You keep that in. Hello. Um, Welcome. This, these are our top books of 2021. <laughs> Great. Uh, we're filming three videos today, so forgive her. <laughs> I got you a blanket. Would you like to go first? That, these are the best. Yes, these are the good ones. Number one, and this is actually in no particular order. I would never try and order these. But these are the best books I read in 2021. Number one that I have on here is In the Dream House by Carrie Maniscalco. It is a memoir about an abusive relationship she had, I think, when she was in her 20s. And it's very hard to read. It's very good. And I wish I had a copy and I don't have it. So. My first one. This is kind of representing both book one and two. Uh, Shades of Wicked by Janine Frost. So I didn't really care for the third one. <laughs> but uh, this is part of her ongoing series. This one is with uh, a character named Ian. It's Paranormal Romance with Vampires. And I, I enjoyed Janine Frost's work for the most part. Sometimes I absolutely hate it. We're not going to talk about those today. We're talking about this one. Ian is... Um, chaos walking and I enjoy that. I kind of thrive on chaos. Neat. My next book is Beach Read by Emily Henry. This book made me sad but in a good way. A girl's uh, father just died. Uh, there, uh, she's a writer. Her father just died and left a bunch of stuff unresolved like emotionally so she's dealing with that. And then she meets up with an old rival from college who's also a writer and he's staying in the house next to hers and they have this kind of bet going where they're going to try and write each, each other's genres and I believe it's the first one to sell theirs wins. She typically writes romance and he writes I think speculative, not speculative fiction, just literary fiction. Yeah, literary fiction. And they switch genres for a book and sadness in, in romance ensue. I like that book a lot too. I wrote Sarah, last year already yeah. on this list. I think Sarah had me read this. Probably. I think. Pretty sure. Either that or we're both interested and I just happen to get it first. Probably. Well, following the Emily Henry train, people we meet on vacation. Oh, you got the hardcover. Yes. From Bookman's, I believe. What? What? Yeah. <laughs> Book of the Month. Oh. That's what this is, obviously. Oh, they just send you bookmarks? We're not part of Book of the Month, but I would be. For the yes. low, low price of sending me free books, I will shill for you. Yes, it is from Bookman's. <laughs> I'm trying to get us free books. No, sponsor us. So People We Meet on Vacation is um, kind of a, I guess, friends to lovers story. Mm -hmm. um, the main character it has a travel uh, blog, and I think she works for a magazine or something. And she would go on vacation with her best friend every single year, every summer, and they would just have fun until the inevitable breakup, I guess. They uh, had a falling yeah. out, and she just wants one last fun summer. So she invites him on another vacation, even though they haven't talked in years. And it's very cute. And uh, Emily Henry just doesn't do, like, the annoying romance things that make me want to scream. Yeah. So I enjoyed it quite a bit. One more romance. I have the unhoneymoon. Well, most of mine are romances, actually. I got into adult romance this year. <sighs> Me too. This is the unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. Or I guess last year. Whatever. <laughs> I don't typically like their books. This is the only one of theirs that I've liked. Everything else I kind of very much didn't like. For some reason, this one hit pretty good. Basically, Olive, uh, her sister is very lucky. She always wins everything, all the time. Everything lucky ends up happening to her. And then... Olive is very unlucky, but not now because it's her sister's wedding day and the whole entire wedding, except for Olive and her, her brother-in-law's brother got sick. So Olive is going to take her sister's honeymoon and she's going to go with her brother-in-law's brother and they're going to have to pretend to be married. And it's very fun. I really liked it. I, I didn't like the falling out at the end because I never do it's always something dumb but I enjoyed it overall I loved it uh, so next up for me is a book called my life amongst the Young underdogs by Tia Maria Torres 
So Tia Maria Torres, in case you don't know, uh, has a Pitbull rescue and a TV show called Pitbulls and Parolees. Um, I kind of have mixed feelings about the show and them, but I read the book because I like animals and uh, I liked it. It made me happy to read it. So it's just a bunch of stories about some of her favorite dogs that she's had over the years and how they improved her life, what they kind of did for her and her family. And I just, it was a fun read because it's just nice and happy. So. Uh, my next one, I had a hard time trying to pick my favorites because it's like, is it what I think is the best? Is it what I enjoyed the most? So I kind of, I have a, a mixed mash of it. So my next one is Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter, which is probably the second most brutal book I've ever read in my entire life. The first being The Good Daughter by Karen Slaughter. Uh, it's a thriller and the premise is a, a woman's husband is, is killed in front of her by a robber. And after he's dead, she's kind of going through his stuff and she finds what looks like a snuff film. It's a woman getting raped and then murdered and she's trying to figure out what's going on and her estranged sister comes back into town to gloat over the death of her sister's brother because he is a terrible person and the sister did not believe her when she said that 20 years ago and it's a really really hard book to read but Karen Slaughter is so good at characters like I uh, I never read anything with rape like I will almost always just get rid of it but she's so good and her characters are so compelling that like I do I read everything she writes now so uh next up for me is get a life Chloe Brown uh this is about a woman named Chloe Brown who uh after a what she perceives to be a near-death experience decides that it is her goal in life to get a life so she moves out of her parents house and gets her own apartment and has this whole bucket list of things she wants to do and she also has a little thing going on with uh, the maintenance man. Uh, this is by Talia Hibbert. And also Chloe Brown has, in my opinion, pretty well represented uh, fibromyalgia. My mom has that. And it's just, it feel, felt very real. <laughs> so, and I appreciate that. I also really like Talia Hibbert because she's very good at not making any one thing the character's entire personality. And that is not something you find yeah. very easily. That's also, also her copy. All of her leads at least in this trilogy are girls who are a, a little on the thicker side and she never like she never fetishizes it she never makes it a thing but all the guys are into it and it never feels forced or anything mm -hmm. but I, I love that so that's great uh my next book getting the ninth by how do you pronounce her name um, tamison muir i believe this one's hard to explain the premise of it's space necromancers who are queer <laughs> and it's very complicated like politically and that's all I'm gonna say about it but uh, I loved this book and I loved the second one I couldn't put both of them on the list obviously but I enjoyed both of them deeply uh, I, I'm so excited because she announced that there's gonna be four in the series instead of three so mm -hmm. I still have to wait another year but there's gonna be two more and I'm endlessly excited next up for me is written the stars by is it Alexand yeah, Alexandria Bellafleur. Uh, this one is about, it's basically Grump and Sunshine, but lesbians. Mm. And uh, it's, it's also fake dating. It's a whole bunch of things all rolled into one. So it's about these two women who start fake dating. One is an astrologist. That's the one who does like the zodiac signs, right? Astrologist. Yeah. And the other one, um, I think is an actuary. It's been a while since I've read this, but I think she's an actuary. And they don't go together, except they do. And it's it was very fun to read. I liked it a lot. And again, it's also kind of, because the second book was more disappointing. She, in this one, the twist didn't annoy me, but in the second one, it did a lot. So keep that in mind. So that's written in the stars. My next one. Surprising even me. <laughs> Accord of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Moss. My relationship with Sarah J. Moss books is, I hate A Court of Thorns and Roses. I genuinely hate it. I love A Court of Mist and Fury. Uh, I think A Court of Wings and Ruin is fine. I, I loved everything they did with Nesta in that book, especially at the end. So I was like really stoked when I found out this book existed. And 
the novella was a joke but then I went to this one and I loved like every single second of it there was so much pain in it and like so much triumph I really I really loved this it's the first book in that series I think that I like it's truly the whole thing is truly super memorable for me it's hard to get me to remember anything but I remember like a million details okay. from this thick thick book but this was this was such a good experience Oh, my next one, uh, neither of us own, weirdly enough, but it's Take a Hint, Danny Brown, which is actually my favorite of the Brown Sisters trilogy. And I like it just because Danny Brown is very much unapologetically into sex while also being a uh, mess prof <laughs> professor. She's not a mess. While also being a professor. And that's not a juxtaposition you see very often in, in romance. Usually the one who's are very into sex is also very flaky and flighty and quirky it would be eve you'd assume of the sisters it would be eve the yeah. youngest one yeah and she and in that one it is a fake dating trope she starts dating the coach i believe that works at her school uh because they had a cute moment that got it went viral on the internet and they thought okay well this could help both of us so they decided to fake date and as fake dating always like fake dating is just dating once female. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's but, true. But I do like it, so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, this one's complicated. My next one, I have Burn Bright by Patricia Briggs, which is the Alpha and Omega series. I'm choosing this to kind of represent the series as a whole because I, I love it so much. I really love it. I won't say the plot of this because it's horribly spoilery, but this whole series, I adore. Well. Funnily enough, my next one is Wild Sign. Um, Cappy told me I couldn't put any rereads on here, so I put the new Patricia Briggs on here so that I could represent all of Patricia Briggs. Well, yeah, it's 2021. I was not wrong in my rulemaking. I'll hold that for you. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Wild Sign is part of Alpha and Omega. You have your own copy. I don't. Do you not? No. It's on my Christmas list. Oh, uh, well... Then you have your own copy. It's probably in my parents' closet right now. But anyway, Wild Sign uh, is the latest in the Alpha and Omega series. Between this and Mercy Thompson, there are, I think, over 20 books in the series at this point. Uh, Wild Sign is way too deep for me to even kind of tell you what this is about, except that, um, nope, I can't tell you anything about it. Everything's spoilery. But this one was a strong entry, in my opinion. Fumbled the end a little bit for you. It did fumble the end for it, but like this is representing all of Patricia Briggs. But this one did. The end was a little. I don't know. I just didn't believe. It. I didn't I buy mean, it. I didn't can, buy it. She can make it make more sense when she gets more. Yeah, into I it. trust Patricia Briggs to fix it. <laughs> well, next up for me, Son of Superman by Peter Tomasi. I don't really know what to say about it other than I loved it. It's about. Okay, the the Superman history in the current canon is very complicated, so I'll just say it's it's Superman, it's Lois, and it's their son, Jonathan, who I would die for. <laughs> and it's the first issue in Rebirth, and it's Jonathan kind of learning to ask for help, kind of, and then it's okay that he doesn't immediately know how to use his powers. It's it's them kind of finding their footing a little bit as a family too, and I love this so much. <laughs> like the, I. I can't express to you the feeling I had when I read this book, but it was like such such wholesome warmth. Okay, next up for me is The Heart Principle by Helen Huang. Um, I adored this book. It got five stars out of me so fast. So uh, this book is about a woman named Anna who is struggling with her newly diagnosed autism. And at the same time, her long-term boyfriend decides he wants an open relationship. So she, in a bit of retaliation makes a dating profile and she meets a, a sweet little marshmallow man named Quan who deserves all the good things in life he is lovely uh and in the middle of this book something really really sad happens and I loved it because it felt so visceral and I just appreciate that kind of depth I also appreciate it just because the author like clearly in this trilogy wants to kind of show <laughs> what autism can be like and I feel like doing that really deep dived into like how important it is to get diagnosed for autism if you suspect that you have it. And I appreciated that too. 
So, this got five stars out of me. I'll probably read anything Helen Huang comes out with. Yeah, me too. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting desperately for her to announce a new book, but this one took two years to write, which makes sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I liked it a lot, and I actually, I, we haven't recommended technically any of these books, but I highly recommend just be prepared for sadness. Tons. Yeah, it's not a rom-com. No, <laughs> not all cutesy covers are rom-coms. My next is, I'll say that both this and the second volume, this is, I believe, yeah, there's a Dark Lord of the Sith, uh, Darth Vader, uh, I don't know, this one doesn't have, uh, yeah, Dark Lord of the Sith volume one, but both of these by Charles Sewell. He's pretty good. I, I read a lot of his Star Wars stuff. This is about Darth Vader right after the end of Revenge of the Sith. This is literally, it picks up right, right after he doesn't even have a lightsaber. He has to go get one and make one. And uh, I don't know if you know this, but lightsabers, uh, when they're red, it's because they're cracked. So um, it makes them more powerful because it unleashes them. Um. <laughs> anyway, he has to get a new lightsaber. He's dealing with Palpatine. Uh, he is also dealing with the fact that he just turned evil. His wife just died. He lost his child because he doesn't know he has twins. It's a lot of like his soul being tugged in all these different directions and ultimately the dark side winning. So I, I adored these so much. And to round out the Brown Sisters trilogy, we mm -hmm. have actor A.G. Brown. Um, this one's probably tied with Chloe Brown for me and how much I liked it. So Eve Brown, the youngest of the sisters, has always had a struggle with feelings of failure so she kind of flits from one thing to another and her parents are tired of it so they tell her she needs to act her age and get a job and uh in a fit of rage she runs out of the house it leaves everything behind and does something quite bad <laughs> uh and finds this guy who what's his name jacob uh Jacob, yeah, nice. It's my ja favorite one. Jacob Wayne. <laughs> uh, she finds Jacob and his B and B, and she decides to um, forcibly have him hire her. So she's helping him she, recover from she an injury. Is helping him. I will say this one really drove home the fact that when she has like hate to love or dislike to love or however you want to put it, not enemies to lovers because that's not what it is. Although this one came pretty close. Mm, well, I guess the violence. <laughs> the violence part. <laughs> but yeah, um, she has this thing where when it's time for them to start getting to know each other, it goes kind of fast from hate to sexual. And I, I feel like it just misses something by doing that. It just doesn't quite hit it for me, but I still enjoyed this. It's still on my top. My final book in the best of 2021. Arguably the prettiest. Definitely the prettiest. It's Dune. <laughs> it's a worm. All right, I'm not going to open it too much because I don't crack it. Anyway, I guess if you don't know the premise of Dune, there's a thing called spice. Everyone wants it. And there's this planet with like no friggin' moisture that has a lot of spice and also big old worms that come and try and eat you if you if you make noise in their sand dunes. And there's a whole lot of politics and I love it and it's beautiful. And I, I'm hoping I like the next five as much as this one. I'm thinking I won't, but that's a problem for not right now. <laughs> All right, my last one is The Charm Offensive by Alison Cochran. Yes, Alison Cochran. Uh, so this is basically a Bachelor parody, it, except it's based in fairy tales. So like the show has a bunch of fairy tale cliches and stuff. And instead of falling in love with one of the women, the main character starts to fall for his producer, who's the other main character. And it was really sweet. I liked it a lot. I liked the representation. I liked that it... <laughs> It played very well, the balance between, like, this is really sad, but also let's do a goofy fun thing. And not a lot of romances do good at that, especially ones that want to be more rom-coms like this. And in <clears> general, <throat> I just felt like, is, I think this is her debut? And if it is, it was a very strong debut, and I look forward to seeing her next book. Oh, I forgot a book. That's okay. My last book is My Dark Vanessa. I 
do on that. Oh my God. I completely forgot it. I'm going to leave it over there. I'm so sorry. <laughs> that one, uh, the, that one's a tough one to read. The premise is a student teacher relationship and it's very detailed and uh, on the, the grooming process and the sort of man this was and the effects it had on the girl, like growing up, I think she was 14 or 15 and it goes over kind of like the next 15 years and it's very intense. And, um, if you think you can't get through it, don't even try because you're probably right. It's really, really hard to read. Hmm. I should have grabbed it. Oh, that's fine. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video. Yeah, we enjoyed these books. Yes. I want to know people's top, I'll say three because I hate doing top one. I want to know what other people's very favorite book of the entire year is. Like if you had to pick from your pile, what do you think you loved the most? Me? Yeah. I don't, I don't even know, man. <laughs> I think, I don't know, maybe Court of Silver Flames for me. I'm, I enjoyed maybe it so much. Maybe The Hard much. Principle? Tell us, please tell us yours, yes. because I absolutely want to know. All right, I, I hope you enjoyed this video. Mm -hmm. If you did, definitely leave a comment, like, or subscribe. You can dislike now, because the dislikes are turned off, so we won't see it. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Goodbye!